So Nick is the creator of the Deckable app that we're all excited to be using. When Nick first came along, he was like, okay, I'm going to get a hundred decks. So excited. I'm going to get a hundred decks. And now you're like almost a thousand, right? Oh yeah. Like we're almost 700. Wow. So. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And it's in a very short amount of time. And the cool thing is to be able to have watched it like just get better and better and better and come together even more and more. And uh, you just released another thing. Like every time I look, there's like a new thing coming. So like I have to learn, relearn things, but it's super, super cool. So I wanted Nick to come. I wanted you to all meet him because I think it will have you, you know, you'll just be a little bit more excited about what you're doing and where Deckable is going and some of the things that you can do with it that Nick is going to show you just some fun things. I want to, I just want to really kind of pull it back to basics of, of kind of why card decks as well. When yes. I start off, I think some of us get into this space for one random reason or another, and haven't necessarily really thought about where we are and where we fit on the map of all the things that could be. And, and so my kind of, focus is really you know with deckable the reason the reason i created deckable or the idea for deckable came to me was i realized that two distinct groups of people were card deck obsessed and and that one was the tarot oracle crowd and i just thought okay they're just you know highly addictive and you know slightly you know quirky and i, I and i was collecting decks too so it was it was appealing to me so i you know i was i resembled that remark right um but then i discovered uh, in the UK, there's this amazing meetup called Cardstock, which happens um, once uh, once a month on the last Friday of the month, I think. Um, and this was a group of facilitators and coaches and ideators and strategists, and they were as addicted to Dex, if not more. Like they put, they and they understood more why Dex was so magical. Like the Tarot group are just using Dex mostly. And they're, they've got lots of them and they love them. And so they know how to use them and why they're good, why they're good. But this other business crew were like, I, I learned, I've learned so much from going to that. I've been going to it for three years now and, and I'm kind of friends with all of them. And I've met and connected with and loaded so many of these people's decks. It's phenomenal. But I look at those two and go, okay, now I see the world differently. Everyone here has uh, watched Harry Potter familiar with that because i know some people are not part of that world um but there's a very cool expression in in harry potter called the muggles they're the non-magicals right and and i think of the those two groups that use card decks as the magicals hmm. but basically it's only because they've got something the other people haven't got yet our goal my goal your goal because you're in this space now as well is to take card decks to the world to the masses to democratize to you know make accessible to everyone to make you know you walk down the street right now and you and you poll 10 people about card deck you'd probably get a pretty spotty response as to why they exist and how you use them and what for right and that's crazy because we all understand what books are for and we all understand what courses are for we didn't have to explain that and card decks are in my opinion vastly superior to both of those mediums right because they're engaging they're fun they're participative people actually get to the end of these things right um so that's that's why i got excited it was like okay you know what we can bring all of these things together into one place as a deck it's a medium it's always in your pocket so there's no excuse the problem with card decks and lots of the tarot oracle people are like oh i don't want digital and 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 it's cute and good luck to them and they're wonderful and they're absolutely fine they can come when they're ready because they're like oh it's all in the energy of the paper it's well actually there's energy in a computer and it's, it's all the same stuff the universe is the same right but it's all uh, it's whatever you believe i'm not going to fight anyone's belief on that right um totally so i just think of it as like well they can come later doesn't matter i thank them for teaching me everything they've taught me because I have stolen with pride the notion of tarot spreads. Tarot spreads are simply a business questioning framework. Mm. In the business domain, who's heard of a SWOT analysis? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Most people yeah. have heard of that. BCG group. There's tons of these matrices 
the Yohari matrix, the Eisenhower window, da da da, all these things, right? Um, they are spreads. So thank you, Taro, because I hadn't realized that. And so we see what we've built into Deckable is a mechanic. We've, we've stolen this. We don't call it spreads in Deckable deliberately because we do not want to. We will. We refuse to be pigeonholed as, oh, that's the Taro app. No, we're not. We are Audible or Spotify or Kindle or Google for Dex, right? Whatever, you, whatever way you want to. Say. Write that down, right. everybody, because that's in your marketing when you're explaining to people why your deck is on Deckable. One thing is to say to each of you is you need to sell deck before you sell your deck. Mm. Right? Let that sink in. If you start selling your deck before you've sold decks, no one knows they need it. Point. It's right? a really good point. Just start already talking about it and start already be using it and start already it, sharing it. it. So your marketing should be decks are amazing. Didn't did you know? Here's why. Okay. Here's other decks. Mm. The best thing you can do in your marketing is not talk about you. And, and I get this in Deckable. Like if I talk about one deck in Deckable or one person, everyone looks the other way. I find it hilarious. It's deeply frustrating. That really is. <laughs> if, I talk about, if I talk about one person's deck and go, this deck's amazing, every other creator just looks the other way. Because Whereas if I talk about gen general stuff, the creator community support me. And it's just like, I've learned that. And that every time I feel optimistic that this video is going to like fly, if I realize it didn't fly because it was specific to a creator. And this is the human psychology. I, that's not, I'm not going to remotely try and solve that. But, um, you know, to recognize that you are evangelizing a space. If you evangelize card decks, you can then evangelize your deck and you come from a position of independent authority, right? Mm -hmm. So make sure that you understand why people use card decks and why they're so good, right? Why are they valuable? And I'm gonna tell you some of that now in case you didn't hear all That's that. That's awesome. I love that. Um, yeah. And the, part the participation part, you cannot, what? You cannot, do not think that you're going to slap it up on Deckable and then you never have to think about it or worry about it or talk about it or share it or do anything. You've got right. to, you know, just like any product, you've got to be out there with it all the time. And you guys are each other's best buddies. You can all promote each other's decks, right? Yes. And, and, find, and don't be satisfied with, with the six or seven or eight of you. Go and find other friends because if this day and age, if you want to win, if you want to reach people, I mean, some people create decks because they love to put their art out in the world and that's that's it. Nothing wrong with that relatively, you know. I don't criticize that. Uh, um, I sometimes wonder why because I don't, I, that's pure artist brain, I guess. But I, I come in it from like, if you're going to create a product, like go sell it or why did you do it, right? Like help. And one thing, the other the other I've heard of, this is self-promotion. No, no, it's not. Self-promotion is me talking about me, right? Or you talking about you. Helping people to solve a problem is not self-promotion. So do not confuse the two, right? Yeah, uh, that's you awesome. Promote your deck is you are trying to help people solve a problem, right? And make sure that when you're – like, think of this as well. It's like, well, don't design your deck. Does your deck solve a problem? It's better off to know what problem your deck solves from – the get-go than getting to having made your deck and then you go well what problem does it solve I, I don't really know and then you go and try and figure it out afterwards if you know what problem you solve on the way into this you will create a a better product and that's yeah. um we're heavily focused on that idea yeah uh, well no i know you, I, i'm sure you would be but, but I'm, yeah, I'm i mean really they're, they're all like really working to that because right. otherwise it makes absolutely no sense it's just a piece of okay. junk not timeless it's not useful all that so yeah awesome that's all really right so i'm going to jump into some some slides now just to like i'm going to blast through those because um i think that's always valuable and then we'll dive in and, and do some some demo stuff as well. yeah i basically want to and and i'm absolutely guilty of this so it's funny that's why i'm so like um kind of chomping at the bit of this because with deckable I totally know it solves problems, but I haven't necessarily articulated that to all the creators and made it a focus. So I'm really shifting right now to make this a focus, right? Because um, we've all got to sell our sell our decks and, and build a bigger community around it. That's why it exists, right? 
And so we need to give people the tools. So I'm I'm really shifting to focus on the problem solving aspects of DEX. I can tell you all sorts of cool things about DEX. And I if and if I generalize about DEX, sometimes I avoid diving into the specific problems that a particular DEX solves in a particular domain. And I think that's one of the things I kind of try and I'm trying to avoid doing moving forward. So I'm I haven't fully if you follow me on Instagram or and deckable, um that that's great. I'd strongly advise you do. Um, you hopefully in the next week or two, you're going to see a shift of content to focusing more on the problem as opposed to evangel. I, to this point, I've been evangelizing decks generally, and, and I'm going to try and shift just to, to focus on um, solving problems. So, gosh, all right. Um, so, um, you know, in, in case you're not aware. I'm, uh, the, these are kind of seven reasons why decks are trending. They are massively on trend right now. Um, it, definitely Tarot and Oracle is part of this. And Tarot is the biggest meme of all time. It's the longest running. You know, a meme is where someone takes something and then copies it and tweaks it a little bit for their own purposes, right? To make their own version of a meme. Every single Tarot deck is a meme of the original um, right away Tarot, right? So it's the biggest meme of all time. Everyone's heard of it, thought of it, seen it, aware of it. Half the people love it and half the people hate it. So be aware of that, that I try and not use tarot and oracle words too much because I don't know if where someone sits religiously on that topic. Um, so it's just it's just a fact. Um, one, of, one of the other things that, that why decks are so popular is because they're an affordable form of art, right? You go to a gallery, buy a piece of art, it's going to cost you a few grand, <laughs> you know, you, you can go and you can have that art in your pocket you know, as a physical deck or on your phone. It's beautiful that you pick the art that you love. It's also um, a belief system, like, you know, kind of card decks and personal wellness, are almost the new church, right? Whatever your beliefs are, how you want to turn up and do your self-care. That's an important, that movement with mental wellness and self-care, thanks to COVID, is now totally, uh, you know, talkable about by anyone and everyone if people are aware of it uh, they're not worried to talk about it anymore i think it's fair to say um fourth reason is decks are a medium like you know books are a medium there are you know, I can, there's thousands of books you can pick any book you like um decks are a medium you can do things with a medium right that there, there are characteristics of the medium you can shuffle a deck it's non-linear right it's visual there's lots of attributes to a deck to, to a deck but it's a medium so it means you can do so many things with it because you can fit anything into a medium um love it. and so was that question i said i love it so good um and then one of the things i i've been noticing that many celebrities have started creating decks and my definition of a celebrity is anyone with a million followers above um because it's really easy to, to determine that um, so Oprah produced, has produced a deck. Esther Perel, I don't know if you know who she is, but she's like probably the, the world's most famous sex therapist uh, from Belgium. Very cool. Her TED Talk is amazing, kind of up there with Brony Brown um, in, in terms of views and popularity. Um, Stephen Bartlett is the Diary of a CEO, CEO um, podcast, and he's made a, a deck. And all these decks keep selling out. It's kind of funny. They think it's trendy to sell out, but like you, we never actually sell out with the digital deck. It's crazy. But um, so we will, I'm sure we'll get these people onto Deckable in time. But they're not there at this point. Um, but it's really cool because these people are doing an amazing job of pre evangelizing Deckable and Dex before I even get to them, right? Because they're pushing Dex, Dex, Dex out to their audience, right? Um, now, the big reason is Canva, print on demand, Kickstarter, mid journey. The whole AI thing, it's become ridiculously easy for anyone to create a deck. And there are a lot of decks to choose from, but it's just, uh, and on top of that, there's a massive community of pro professional and semi professional readers and facilitators, people who make a living using card decks, right? So there's all these people pouring rocket fuel on the fire to keep fueling awareness and attention around decks. And you know, a very conservative estimate is the card deck industry is between three and five billion by 2030. It's a very low number. Wow. Um, so you're in that space and, you know, you have to go and steal your little corner of it. But the more you understand the space you're in and you can articulate why, the more easy it is for your customers to go, oh, I get it. This is great. Thanks. Right. You become the hero that, that 
brought them to the card deck world. And I some, it depends on what deck, but sometimes I think it's easier to teach someone who doesn't know anything about decks to come and use Deckable than it is someone who's got a paper preference, whatever, right? But I, I always laugh when people, you know, focus on the printed because like okay that one often the reason people have a printed deck is to feed their own ego it's, there's nothing there's nothing more and, and i'm the same i've made a board game um loved it the first, i can still visually remember the first time i got hold mm. of that deck the first time the package arrived and i opened it up it's, it's a beautiful experience um but it's equally satisfying to see your deck on deck for the first time you know you're when you've created something and it's digitally it's like and you see somebody else using your content and your product that's amazing too so um and i think one of the things you know, i really want to iterate is we're in the moving business right I mean, we're not 1-800 got got junk but 1-800 got deck because we're moving people from one state to another Love it. you know we're helping solve problems for people right so we're moving their emotions from trapped to hopeful maybe right as a simple example and you know think about your deck how is your deck going to move people and how are you going to tell people that your deck moves people right um we're moving uh people's beliefs from you know freedom to collaboration like what what beliefs would you like to have because that's these are life choices that that card decks can help you uh, you know make those better choices and be aware of it so beliefs is important um and uh thoughts you know i could think you should have changed to fit into me maybe that's how i used to think now i'm thinking i'm ready to listen right we're shifting thoughts we're moving people from a to b um you know and we're doing all this uh, super ironically while on the move right well on the go on the mobile phone so People can and do and will continue to slam technology as being this evil force, which it undeniably can be. And I'm almost as a technologist, I'm almost embarrassed on some of the things that actually happened in technology in a bad way. But I believe with a passion, you know, the deckable will let you help your clients reclaim those mobile moments. Don't doom scroll, make life choices, journal, meditate, reflect. Yeah, that's great. You know, design a better life right so um you know and i also strongly believe if you can't fix it feature it and, and it's not a case of with with deckable fixing it because i think we are the solution to um you know doom scrolling and, and over technology over excessive technology use the, re the reason you have to talk about it is because people have a, have a view you need to give them a reason why you need to tell them why this is the solution to that, because otherwise they might say, oh, I'm trying to keep off technology. And, and I notice you know, a lot of people do say that, right? They do. But you're not they on do. Facebook. You are you're actually focused on a, on doing something specific. Yeah. Right. And also these people that tell you that, if, if they were wholly committed, they wouldn't have a website and they wouldn't be selling you stuff digitally, but they are. So they're selling you stuff digitally, telling you to get off tech. It's like, okay. You stop using tech and then tell me that you're not you to do that, right? They're not, and they won't. Um, so, you know, that's just where we are. It's We're going through a lot of that. And, you know, one of the biggest things I honestly suggest to, to all of you is use Deckable daily. Use it to draw a card, not just from your deck, but, you know, find other people's decks that you love too and create your daily practice to yeah. turn up and draw cards, meditate, journal. Because then, you know, I love the expression, use your own dog food. You are you, know, you are doing what you preach to other people. If you come from a position of, oh, I use this, I do this, I'm expecting you to do it too. Why? Because I do it, it's worked for me. Yeah. Yeah, that is living in full integrity. If you go, oh, I don't really like cards. I was like, well, honestly, what are you, what are you doing, creating a card deck, right? And I've I've been stunned how many people I've met who said that, because they, some of them fancied the idea of creating a deck, but didn't fully, in integrity, want to live and breathe and use the use decks in their own life, which just struck me as wholly out of integrity. So. But well, also um, they'll get familiar, you know, you guys will all get familiar with the apps right. and you can explain, you can do a demo and showing people how you do it so that they, you know, they can do it too. Right. And, and honestly, you will create a better experience. 
as a consequence of using other people's decks. Because when, whenever you're creating anything, one always gets so close to one's own idea. I'm you know, guilty of that with Deckable in many ways, right? But I also spend time trick- checking out a lot of other things to give myself that awareness and balance. But um, having that knowledge will help you design a better experience because you're not asking anyone to do anything that you wouldn't wouldn't and haven't done yourself. And I guarantee you, if you do that, you'll go, ooh, I should change that in my deck. That'll work better if I do this, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and steal and borrow ideas from other people's decks because, they, oh, they did that. I like the way they did the third side or the guidebook or the back of the box or, you know, how they did whatever. That's valuable. So, um, you know, and often we're asking people to change, right? The reason why someone comes to a user deck is because they're unhappy, they're depressed, possibly their life's not going very well. So for those people, pain change is painful and challenging. And I think that's one of the cool, when you make it fun and engaging, you've got more chance of actually making those changes and making those changes stick, right? Um, and, you know, um, the secret to, 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 to making that change, it, it, there's many, many solutions to that, but you know one is just you know um you know mindfulness um mindful awareness you know grabbing seizing the moment that's a good way of making change of creating new habits right so here's uh you know and all of this artwork by the way is all on deckable every single one of these decks i think are stunning um i love the the return to mindfulness deck and then you know the other thing is daily practice right and and honestly I knew that's what I was creating with Deckable, but I didn't know the word. <laughs> um, I knew it was about turning up every day, you know, creating habits, making something repetitive that just feels normal, having healthy thoughts. Um, and daily practice is the universal word, phrase that people use to describe this. And Deckable is a daily practice toolkit. And, and it's phenomenal because there is nothing like this out there. There are bunch of mindful a bunch of journaling apps and there's a bunch of meditation apps and there's a bunch of tracking apps and this app and that app but they're all separate so it's complicated with deckable it's you choose the decks and you just do the same thing inside deckable if you get bored pick a new deck right so it's you it it keeps it very simple to actually create and maintain a habit Uh, and then you know forming habits i mean we even we've even got this deck from nirayal um, which is all about being indistractable. That's what his book's about, and the deck is just a summary of that, right? So, uh, and then you know the other the other secret is just connecting with spirit. I mean, what that means to you is different for everyone. Um, you know, we're all different. We're all driven differently. We all hear everything. Every one of you will hear what I'm saying today completely differently, right? <laughs> and that's just normal. We hear everything differently. Um, so, connecting with spirit is a very personal experience and do what we each need to do but um you know our own version of self-care will be radically different but this gives you a place to put that and it gives you the you the tools for yourself and for your clients to put that into practice so just be aware that you are selling a daily practice solution with your deck right and 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 importantly that it would never be around one single deck you know someone they might use your deck for three months in a, in in isolation but over time they're going to want to bring other things into that right and that's healthy to be aware of the other thing i think that's really important is words dreams shape our reality there are there are so many word type decks on deck i love this deck supposing and every photo in this deck is one of these little mini mannequins dressed up and put into a different scene and it's just it's so creative so fun beautiful inspiring um here's a bunch of other beautiful um word art driven decks that the intuition heart deck and power of three etc these are all different decks and, and words just touches you know we, and every word doesn't mean like there is the the dictionary doesn't mean what it used to mean anymore i think people we each have a different meaning for every word even though they kind of have the same meaning um and so you know pick your words wisely like i often tell the story of how i i was willingly using the word battle and fight and challenge. These are all very male words, but they're also very challenging words. And then now you try and I, I, I try and avoid those words. I consciously notice myself and I now try and say stuff. I play, I dance, I invite, 
these things to play with me instead of fighting with them, right? And oh, good. when you those words you choose become your reality, it becomes your mindset. Like I definitely have a very positive outlook. Sometimes things get me down, but I have a you know where there's always solution based. Where let's solve this, you know. I don't. I have big dream thoughts as opposed to like can't do thoughts. Um, and, and you can cultivate that and decks are a wonderful way of cultivating it. And ev the decks that will inspire you will be different. So, you know, go find them, try them. Um, they're there to be had. And all these words, like I, I often talk about, there are three basic decks that everyone should own. Um, one is a values deck, because if you don't know what your top three values are, you probably not going to be living a happy life. If you go to bed every night, just before you go to bed, say, did I live my life today in accordance with my values? I pretty much guarantee you will be happier. So the first thing to do is get yourself a values deck and do a values card sort and um, you know, make sure you find out what your values are. It's actually harder than you think. And the other one is a strengths deck. You know, there is no sense in trying to fix your weaknesses. That's what you delegate. But it's worth knowing what your strengths are and sometimes your friends tell you what your strengths are. Some people, people don't know their strength, right? We all have strengths. So you, you use a, a deck of strengths and use your friends to help you highlight that if you don't yeah, know. I mean, is. we take our strengths for granted sometimes. Yeah, yeah, totally. Most people have right. to tell you. <laughs> yeah. um, and then the third, the third deck is um, uh, emotions, right? So you know, we, sh we should all have a bigger um, emotional vocabulary. We should use more words to describe how we feel now. It's worse for guys. Absolutely, totally true. Like guy, you ask a guy how's he doing, fine. Fine is not an emotion. <laughs> fine, fine is an obstacle, a roadblock to not talk about your emotions, right? And okay. I'm sure, I'm sure some women do that too. Um, but the more words we use to describe our emotions, the the better it is. And we also begin to locate how does love, hatred, resentment, where do you feel that in in the body and, and and cultivating those skills is important right pamela pamela is um trying to explore value strengths and and emotions all in one deck and you no know, wonder i'm having difficulties <laughs> right but, but, um, you could and i'm not saying yeah. but you could also have three decks that could be combined and then it's less complicated they could just visually coordinate so that's mm -hmm. one option um not trying to influence your budget but it's uh yeah. I think it's a fascinating topic. Um, and so experiences move people. I think this is one of the most important things to recognize. And, you know, um, experiences are more memorable. So here's some great st stats from, from this research that temp we remember 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, all the way up to 90% of what we experience. So recognize that with Deckable, you are creating an experience. It's not just the deck. It's the deck plus remembering the cards, plus moving them around, plus journaling, plus meditating, right? So it's it's going to make you, like, your your job is to help people feel something when they experience your deck, right? That, if, when you achieve that, you'll know you're, you're, you know, you're on your way to greatness. So. And we're also experiencing a shift from consuming to participating. We have been consuming for 20 years of the internet. And we're now shifting to say, I want to do something. Like the way we teach people at school these days, it's all collaborative learning. They don't do anything by themselves anymore. They all do group learning. So no one ever fails. But it's also a way that people, they expect to participate. They like, they want to put their hand up. They want to speak. They want to get involved. And so creating experiences that, that are about participation is very, very important. And Deckable does that really well uh, because we're, you know, to move and choose your cards is participating. To journal on, on, on in your response to that, to, to choose cards that, to reflect your values is participation, right? And and you're creating experiences. And and when you create experiences, you're creating longer memories for people, right? So you're going to be top of mind because and you're and you're in the pocket in that moment when they could have been doom scrolling. They've got the deck there to go, right? So that's that's important. Um. Now this is our, our vision is really to. I mean, Bill Gates was like way back in the day said we wanted to put a, a computer in every home and, and ibm thought there was a market for five computers and <laughs> and and our vision is let's put a deck in every pocket right because there are all these people that have 10 20 50 100 decks they're great but what about the 95 percent people that don't even know what a deck is and um 
So that's what we did. We, that's the big opportunity we see. And taking it digital just makes so much sense. So, um, and part of the magic we've done with Deckable is we've we've blended tarot and card, which is famous for spreads, right? Business questions, structured questions, as I mentioned before, and card sorts. And card, does everyone know what a card sort is? I can happily explain it if no one does. It's just when you, you know, if you flick through a values deck with 60 values and you've got to get down to three, you're doing a card sort of, yeah, you know, you, create, you, you move the cards into a yes, no, maybe pile. And you eventually end up with you know, three to five cards that represent your decision making. So decks are very important for decision making, uh, self reflection, all that kind of stuff. And uniquely, there isn't another platform on the planet that does this that blends tarot as well as we've done it and card definitely sorting. Definitely not. Definitely not. Um, and you know, just let, I love that Steve Jobs said there's an app for that because literally there's a deck for that too, right? And there's a very short video stepping you through the seven different segments as we see it mm. and and the decks in um each of the categories so we, we have decks in every single one of these categories and it's just it, it always blows me away to realize that we have this depth and breadth of content um yeah oh yeah definitely like ghost yeah definitely goes uh if you read it up on card sorting uh Pamela, there's there's a whole lot of stuff out there one of the one really cool things there's a really good website called decaholic.com run by it was run by this lady called Stephanie Goya. And she has some good videos in there that talk about um how and why people use card decks. And I, I've learned a lot from that from those videos. That's worth watching. What was her name again? It's Decaholic. Uh, Decaholic, and it's Stephanie Goya. Uh okay. G I O I A, I think it is. But uh, but you can Decaholic's pretty easy to find and spell, and, and you can from her website to a YouTube page, and, and you can see all the videos there. Thank um, you. Yeah. Most helpful. Uh, so there we go. And then this is new, uh, uh, but we're really, what we've really focused on is these seven, in the middle there, you can see these seven um, segments. So creativity and ideation, um, learning, coaching, and collaboration, wellness, therapy, and diversity. And each of those seven segments in the middle, and and then each of those seven segments resolve around why do people use creative and ideation decks? Well, they've got a creative block. They're looking for tools and tips and how to create uh, uh, and generate ideas. They're having problems finding inspirational yeah. sources, right? And you know, so I can then dive into wellness and therapy and people's problems that, that, that they've got trouble finding access to people. They're having trouble with self-exploration and understanding how to go in inside. Um, that having trouble finding tools to do that. And so basically what, what I've tried to do with this diagram, I mean, it's a gross simplification, but it, it is saying each of these decks in each of these seven segments solve these problems and many other problems like it, right? We have two leadership or three leadership people here, right? Three? Three of you, I think. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah right. and, and honestly, we think, I mean, whew, it, selling leadership decks into the enterprise is very exciting because you can go to a company and sell sell ten thousand copies of a deck to one company in one, in a couple of meetings, right? That that is phenomenal. You think about your you know, your individual deck. You'll never do that with an oracle a deck, right? Um, right. But if, if you have the right connections, like we we had a conversation with one company, um, and I I helped the creator sell. Uh, she sold 2,000 copies of one deck to one company. And then we went on to have a conversation with their, their head of HR about the possibility of selling 12,000 digital decks to the whole company. And, you know, there's there are thousands of opportunities like that. I mean, because there are, there are lots of businesses around the world who have, you know, all the problems that um, leadership and development decks solve and, and companies are looking for tools. And the cool thing is, you know, you can package up a deck for an end just for one company you could literally create a deck for apple and sell it to apple like i, I know apple uses a deck in their onboarding process for new employees the decks are used everywhere so knowing this is is valuable and then creating it and speaking to speaking to that helps because you will we literally you don't have to have this conversation when you talk about audible or kindle because they're already established right but when you when you don't appreciate the full breadth and depth of what card decks can do, it's somewhat important to articulate the opportunity. And this is the opportunity. 
right? And and I also one of the other reasons I'm focused on this is because I find so many people, if you have the skills to create a deck, you can probably think, which segment should I create my deck in? Where is the biggest opportunity for me? Because I think Oracle and Tarot is probably the most crowded space at this point. And I would say that's the hardest place to actually gain traction and momentum because there's so many people doing that. But here are seven segments, six other segments that you could focus on. So um excellent just, as long as you think about i'm making a deck to solve a problem and if you know who the if you know who you're solving it prop for you could go to that person people like that person and test it so i would i if i if i was creating a deck for leadership i would i would go i would say i, I know you know my my seven best hr connections and i'd be saying hey building this to solve this problem can i come and show you can we pilot it with 50 of your employees great right. idea. so good um it's simple to do and they're like oh my god yeah yeah the, the reason the reason the the lady that i was telling you about sold two thousand copies of her deck to 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 one company was because the board said mental wellness is a problem we needed an initiative they gave hr the initiative and hr was like i don't know what to do and hr said oh well katie's got a deck why don't we use that and that was how it worked like if this this stuff isn't rocket science people have a mental wellness problem Every uh, yeah, people have demoralized teams. Well, you know, you can go and sell this stuff into an enterprise, and it's in everyone's pocket. It's cheap as chips to do to deliver, you know, these decks. And also, don't under don't underprice them. There are many decks out there that are in the ninety nine, you know, sixty, seventy, ninety dollar range for businesses. They they'll spend a thousand dollars on a course, so they'll easily spend a hundred dollars on a deck, right? So don't uh, undersell yourself. Okay, so um, where are we up to? Yeah, so. You know, Deckable is your, you know, it's a global community of artists, thinkers, mindful folk. Um, and this is about putting wellness for life in your pocket on your on your phone, on your tablet, and your desktop. It's just we've we've spent a lot of time finding and sourcing content for all of this to to tell this story, to have 700 decks across this, because then it means it's accessible to everyone to go and Oh yeah, you know because if you sell your deck into an enterprise, they're going to be like, "Well, what's deckable?" Oh well, it's this. Look, there's another hundred decks like this one. Oh, you mean I could buy your deck and these other ones too? Oh, great! What a wonderful resource. Thank you. We're trying to make it easier for you to go and sell to sell these tools and 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 sort of we're standing on the shoulders of giants. And you can stand on our shoulders, and we all can you know, benefit and help each other. So, um. And now it's really time to show, not tell. So I can just dive in and do some do some demos. And I I might do just a little bit of this just from these recorded videos. But um, one of the things that's important, I think, is that we've we've not just digitized the deck. We've created a workflow for a daily practice experience. So uh, here I am in Deckable, and I start playing this. And from the home page, you know, I can choose a card. Um, size the card flip it over uh, add more cards that's it you know but i'm it's, it's a tactile experience and then i can i can journal on that as well uh and i can i can type or i can just talk to my phone and it, and it transcribes all of that for me um now it's saved away and it's in my timeline never to be forgotten so that's a pretty i love the timeline thing and it's so cool yeah really can see progress and everything so good it's, it's so funny because i often get comments from people because they've never seen an app like this so they don't know how to judge it right so they go, what's that for i don't get the timeline why would you want wow. that okay. and, like, and you tell them and they're like oh yeah that's great but people haven't they haven't worked it out for themselves and that's there's nothing wrong with that but just this is my point is don't assume anything yes just don't assume your client knows anything you're going to say, I'm going to take you down a path to show you how to put a build a daily practice for you, your team, whatever it is you want to do. Right? Hence your um, hence your suggestion that you practice with other people's decks and start pulling and seeing how it feels. So then you have words, your own kind right. of words to put in there about how you want them to use your deck. Yeah. And then the best thing is show them your own personal usage of the app, right? That's very, very compelling. Um, and then uh second example is shuffling so i can just there's my cards i've chosen them now doing a free form so i can just shuffle the cards there it is and i can stop that at any point 
Uh, so I'm actually influencing the shuffle. I can flip the cards over and shuffle on a different face, right? So shuffling is very tactile and visually appealing. And okay. you just drag the cards onto the canvas and there you've got it, right? Um, so it's nice and simple. And then once you've got the cards on the canvas, you can you can move them around, grid them out. Um, the layout, the, remind me as I go into the demo to show you how the cool the layout feature is. Because um, I think a lot of people have not realized how amazing the layout button is. Uh, I'll show you that when I do that. And then meditation is 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 super simple. Um, oops, I just went past there. Um, not really much to show with that. Oops. And then um, here's an example of a card sort. So I just choose, I'm trying to do a values card sort. So I'm dragging a bunch of um, values that I think are interesting from the from the deck. And now I've got too many cards on my canvas. And I'm done. There we go. I just arranged them so I can now go, oh, okay, let me group these together. What am I going to think about? And I'm not, I'm sort of ranking them and grouping them and saying, okay, I'm now going to get rid of some of these. And I just throw them to the trash and they go away and I can add them back if I want. But I'm visually prioritizing my values and I'm doing it with my fingers. So I'm super engaged. Like you can't think about, and you know, when you do meditation, everyone's constantly saying to you as you meditate, return to the breath, return to the breath, because you've gone somewhere else, right? When you're using Decable to do a card sort you haven't gone anywhere we haven't lost your attention we've absolutely got it when doing that fine motor movement is engaging it's enjoyable it's fun it's tactile and it and it's it visually appealing and it never forgets so that's there saved away right um and then here's an example of a mixed deck reading so i've ch chosen one card from one deck and i just choose the deck selector and pick a different deck and I can then add a card from that deck, and I then add another card, pick a different deck, and flip them over and choose a card. I can shuffle at that point to everything that I want. I've now got three cards, and I go and add, probably I'm going to add a fourth one here. And so I pick a different deck, and now I've got cards from four different decks, right? And there we are. So. It's super cool to do that because if you create multiple decks, you can have you can teach people to combine decks in different ways. And combining is an amazing randomizer. Like I honestly did not appreciate just how important randomization was when we created Deckable. And we have learned and listened to everyone. And you know, we have what's called a quick draw feature that just throws, you know, one, two or three cards in the canvas, but you can always throw an extra card into because some people don't when they do a spread they don't want to pick a card they want it to be picked for them everyone's different and and randomization is really cool from a business perspective as well because you combine different options and you go oh, i hadn't thought of combining those two because humans are incredibly predictable and we do the same old stuff again and again and again and card decks help you help you step outside of that predictability right so cool stuff and then you know the biggest i i call the timeline my done list you know and a done list is more important than a to-do list to someone that's you know you're building up your stamina for your daily practice looking back when you get to base camp on the way up to the top of everest and you go i'm done this is really um this was enough right you look back and you think i've come all this way that's pretty good. I've turned up every day and I've journaled every single day and I've done all this stuff. And I look forward to the summit and go, I can do it. I've come this far. I can keep going. Right. And and that's that's exactly what the timeline is, is a done list. It's your achievement. Oh, it's your um self-care routine and regime and 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 cherishing your own self-love and self-care, however that works for you. That's what your done list is. Proof. And that's that's priceless 
Awesome. So many ideas. I see everyone just popping. Pamela was asking, what's the purpose of mixed readings? Mixed readings is sometimes people combine cards from different decks to see what that tells you. Like that's a wonderful journal prompt. You know, you can you can journal from one card from one deck and that's great. Or two cards from one deck or three cards from one deck. But if you actually do a mixed reading, what, what do you see? Why are those things combined? What's it telling you? It's a perfect, it's like the power of randomization helps you see, see life through a different lens it shakes up your world and go oh gosh I sh what a great idea right you know when you go to vegas and there's a, those slot machines and they roll around imagine how you had a three slot slot machine on each one was a different set of one was a one was a set of values one was a set of emotions and one was a set of strengths yeah and you spin good. it and you go and you get one from each right um that's a mixed deck reading in effect and we can do that in deckable in one deck by using suits, or you can use a mixed deck reading um, by combining one from each, right? So, and you know, just just to your just exactly what, who was that just said my brain exploded. Well, Pamela has been exploding the whole the whole night. She's kind of the, the wonderful thing about it is if you show your client this, especially in a leadership development context, it's like these are amazing tools. Why? Because when you walk into a company and people are like, I don't want to do this. I don't want another one bloody HR crappy exercise. What are we wasting our time for here today? Card decks, they immediately get people into think that they're thinking about playing a game because you're saying card deck. So mm -hmm. you're in a playful place and you get people engaged and they they feel lose their resistance. When when I did that card sort before, I could have done it in a surveying tool, but it would be incredibly boring. But it's fun and tactile and engaging. And basically when you when you've got somebody engaged, that's priceless, right? And randomization is wonderful for that. Yeah. So don't don't forget to sell that heavy and hard because uh, human beings just choose the same old. It's like I blame McDonald's, the Happy Meal. It's like the, it, that's the perfect reason for the lack of choice. You don't make new, fresh choices. That's wonderful. That is valuable to any individual or any enterprise. You don't have to do them. You don't have to put them into life. It's like going into a changing room in a um, in a dress up store. You can be I'm going to be the lion tamer tonight. I'm going to be a knight. I'm going to be, you can, you can imagine all these different scenarios. Do you have to go and change your life and become a lion tamer? No, but I went through the process and decided, oh, I'm going to do this. That was a great idea. I didn't think of that myself. Randomization is part, is very powerful. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Elia. Yeah. I, um, I know that or I've been told that you can't really customize your decks with your business branding. Uh, okay. Do so in a in a heavy way. So I'm just wondering okay. what your suggestion is for, you know, is there a place to talk about, you know, what our business does and have a, a, a bit of a yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the, the the only comment about the branding is not to put on the back of the card. I get every if the back of every card is your logo. Yeah. It, it's like I've paid for the deck. I don't need to see your brand every time right. everywhere the, your brand can be on the cover of the box it can be on the back of the box there can be cards in the deck that are about you in the guidebook cards this it's all okay. really cool the only thing that i'm against is i would resent having bought somebody's deck then to have to look at their logo every day that i use the deck that's fair give, enough give yeah. the deck a look and have it branded so when i see it i think of you you know it can use your colors but just um Try not to, like we, we, I, it's, most people have not done that. I mean, some people do, and then we try and guide people away from that. Mm -hmm. So we're, not, we're absolutely not trying to discourage you. Like we give you a landing page on Deckable for you as the creator to brand you and link your story and links okay. to all your decks and all your social profiles. Yeah, and you have um, your profile card, card that has you on it. So. And you could have as many guidebook cards as you want, and you've got a card in there that could be about your business, uh, about your other products, you know, all that is totally fine. Okay, great. Thank you. Anna. Thank you. Really exciting about this, Nick. And I appreciated all the um, software related analogies as a former software analyst, you know, the evangelizing and all that. So really enjoying this. I have a few questions. Do you say that if we were to sell a deck to a company, let's say, a, a, what if a company commissions me to create a private deck for right. them only? So you you yeah. could host, you could still host it, and it would only be available to them. Correct. 
Yeah, we haven't totally formal like we don't have that totally formalized in a, it like but we like tell us that you have a need and give us a bit of a, a notice okay. period. Of, we, we definitely are doing that because we see the basically what we call we'd call that um and it's not white label it's be, it's basically be off right. label. So it it's oh. on deckable but it's only it would only be buyable by the people in the company right, or, right. Yeah, they would get it you know, private get, label yeah, private label. Private but, label. Well, it's sort of. private label sort of. is when yeah, private yeah, label is when stackable gets completely right. rebranded. That's white labeling, and off label is like I can get a book on Audible. It's still Audible, but it's not visible to everybody in the Audible store, right? right? I assume they do. I don't know for a fact they do, but um, because I, one of the things that I really fascinated about is company culture decks, putting the company's culture document and vision statement and blah blah in every employee's pocket. Yes, which actually that's a question, a follow up question I have. You know the categories that you had, the seven categories that you had, yeah. some yeah. of their wellness and so on. So I'm one of the folks who has leadership as a topic. So I was trying okay. to picture where. In those categories, it could fit in several. Right, and, oh, and they can. A deck doesn't that's have. That's okay to... with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, those seven segments. We originally launched the product with eighteen genres, and yeah. it was both too many and too few. <laughs> so a year later, or eighteen months later, we boiled it down to seven. But then below those seven, we can have you know at the moment we have something like sixty or seventy segments. And so mm -hmm. we literally could create for you if you created some type of leadership deck that no one else had, or that it, if no one else has it, that's not a good reason to create a, 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 mm -hmm. its own unique genre. We would create a genre if there were two or three people that were creating the same offering and then here's all the decks on because then it's more valuable to the customer that says oh you know i can buy your deck but you know what for i've got a budget i'm just going to buy all of these like because and that's great because they're yeah really learning on a topic like if you're into values go to deckable and buy every values deck that exists like it's not going to break the bank but you've got all that knowledge and experience and and all share. different all different values like some right, that, exactly. they didn't all think of the same ones. Dip gifted deck. That's becoming a quite a common question. Um, so there's two two descriptions of gifting a deck. We will sell you tokens at half the price of a deck. So it's the same as if you bought it, you bought it through the through the deck store. And then you can give that token to someone and then they get the deck for free. The second meaning of gifting a deck is can I bear, buy this deck for Mary for her birthday? <laughs> and we we do the token one. We haven't done the gift for Mary, but I actually get quite a few asks for that. Um, so I think I, and it's not hard. Well, it's not simple. It's actually not simple to do because you can't, you've got to give it to an individual and email addresses and all that. So it just gets complicated. But tokens yeah. work really well, though. The coupons, tokens. Yeah, um, they definitely do. They you definitely just have do. a bunch of them and then you can like gift away one, like on a call or something like that. Pamela is going to buy you all the values decks tonight. <laughs> So, so hi, Nick. Um, thank you for this. So I actually kind of want to go down that the road that Anna started us down. Um, so my concept initially for the deck is that I do already a lot of leadership training. And so just like you were talking about, I want to take this and customize it to my courses and sort of make this either a bonus or a special. I can do it for companies because I do companies, you know, I, I do targeted stuff to companies. As you said, it's not yet, you know, if that's an area you're willing to go down or to at least look oh, at, because that would be a well, great thing to be well, able like, to. Do. Okay, right. All right. And so I let me get say, it. I know iPhones are e much easier. Right. The well, Androids are a pain okay, in the neck. But let me just let me just reset that because another great. Thing, I'm I mean, looking to do hundreds of people and then I take them to Deckable and go, here it is. It's part of what you bought. So they're not going to buy it. I'm buying it, you know, and, and right. figuring out appropriate pricing and all that kind of stuff. So I'm yeah. hoping, yes, when you said that, that to oh, go down that you, road if, further. If you, if you want to have a, convers a deeper conversation about everything that that means, that might mean, I'm more than happy to make sure that I appreciate that because there may be things that you're asking for that I hadn't thought of. I've been, I literally oh, gather, I gather these requirements from dozens and dozens of calls and then to my to the best of our ability, we try and make the right choices of what we can do. We we can never do everything at once. So we always we have to pick the three features we're going to deploy, 
we do those to try and satisfy more people's needs and then we come around for a second second bite at that cherry like three months six yeah months that later. would be great that would be great i know rosie and elliot both told me you were really open to stuff so i would love to connect oh, with well, you on that and talk a little bit more about maybe, that the I, the other question i do have I, is that like i'm one of those people that can't get deckable because so google are slightly evil because they they, they sell <laughs> as new very easy <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> sell <laughs> as new shitty old phones that they've had in their warehouse for years and it's often not even Google necessarily. It's because they've got this fragmented distribution system. You're buying a Samsung or a whatever, right? Now, it, I looked on Amazon, I think two days ago, because someone asked me this, $75 for a tablet, Android 14. That's not an obstacle. Buying a phone is, it, phones are more expensive because they've got all the other stuff in right. it. Just a tablet um, is not. Now, there are, ver there are various technical solutions to this because we, we have built Deckable for the next 20 years, not the last 20, right? So we've, we've chosen a technology where it's actually built in Flutter from Google, which is a development platform. And, and it, Flutter is an it was such a great choice because it's um, it lets us deploy one app for Android and for iOS, for, for tablets and smartphones, and also for desktop. So our desktop solution is not far off. And it's not, we're not rewriting it for desktop. It's the same code line, right? So, and when we when we build it for desktop, it will be more for a facilitation type features, right? So with a person leading a session Ooh. with other people, you know, so we're, um, we're gathering all those requirements, right? Um, so like, honestly, I feel there is, I mean, I feel there's more money ultimately in the enterprise than anywhere else in this space. So I'm, I've been very like dogmatically focused on saying we are not getting pigeonholed into any one space. We are covering all seven. We see, we it, it may look to the outside like we've gone deeper into Tara and Oracle, but that's purely because we've been stripping the value out of spreads and to make it businessy. And we're in the in the future release, we're going to come up with with Deckable. There's a bunch of spreads that are there right now. We're going to ship with the product a bunch of um, matrices and grids like BCG and SWOT analysis as spreads, right? To, to communicate that Deckable isn't just for the, the woo-woo crowd. And I mean, it's so funny because the woo-woo the woo -woo is entering the workplace. There are lots of decks that are kind of trans-spiritual entering the workplace. So it's fascinating, but you know, we, we're we doing our, our, the best job we can. I, I think we've done an amazing job of pulling all this together. Um, it, it may not seem like it at some times for some people, depending on their individual needs, but we have like Rosie can attest to how far we've come <laughs> over an 18 month period. I mean, to have got to 700 decks and to have got to the feature set we have now. And, uh, and now the there's a wish list. You just announced a wish list, which is so fun. So yeah, I'm very open to, to having a conversation about that because I don't want to miss a requirement. I have a pretty good sense of what that is, uh, but we absolutely want to, you know, if you said to me, I want to sell a thousand copies of this deck into blah, I'm like, okay, yeah, how can I help? Let me, I'll yeah. come on the call with you, I'll, you know, whatever, right? I didn't mention this in this call. I was going to show it, but I didn't get that far. Uh, video and audio. Like Deckable is an online, it is, you may not oh, realize. Yeah, that's it one of the video. things that's important here for them is the audio and right. the video part. This so, is an, it is an online show. course platform. I don't know how you're delivering your courses right now. Because you could be using, I don't know, um, Kajabi, Thinkific, whatever. I mean, there's tons of them, right? Um, our view is Deckable's way more fun. And fun trumps everything because engagement, participation, you know, the best statistic, there's two statistics that Rosie and I talk about a lot. 13% of people at best finish a book. Um, I don't know if you knew that, but it's, it's a very hard statistic. Anyone know the number of what percentage of people actually finish online courses that they take? Oh, yeah, it's really low. 6%. Ooh. Right. So when your HR person is saying, I'm thinking of buying, you know, some online courses, it's like you realize you have a 6% chance of anyone completing those courses, which and, they won't. And those they'll... people are working a lot of hours. They don't really have time to be watching any big, long courses. And it's funny, but if you just see, if you come to Deckable today and you buy a deck with video, it's really freaking cool. Like Rosie's been through the journey where it was 
less cool and less cool. But oh my God. Yeah. And that just really happened that it got really cool just really recently. It's so, so cool. there is everyone sees videos and they're literally the static, sterile, non-touchable thing. You can either have it, you know, full screen or not with Deckable. You can rotate them. You can have, you know, Amazing. and it's like, why do you need to do that with video? Well, it's because we're human beings and we get bored and we're touchy feely people and we want to be engaged. Right. So that stuff matters. I can show, I mean, honestly, the best, the best thing I can suggest is you create a really ugly version of your deck as soon as possible and start using it. <laughs> Don't worry about, you know, doing everything. You, know, you can good, use it. In, you can keep ever. it in draft form and use it in the draft form. Exactly. So, we're good. working on it. We're yeah. on it. Yeah. Gutenberg has got a lot to answer for. He makes us all say, I won't do this until it's finished, it's published, it's perfect. It's like, no, because it's, it won't be perfect unless you pre-publish it and use it and iterate on it. And that's how oh, you make it. I mean, the great thing about this is that, you know, you can have it there. I mean, I've changed mine like like four, five, six times sometimes. Like, oh, no, I think I like a different back. I'll put a different back, you know, and you just, you just can keep right. doing that. Like there's no, nothing happens if you just do that. Trials is coming very soon. Good mm. to take it longer than we thought. Trials means people can actually get any deck for free for three days. Yeah. And then at the end of three days, it just locks back up. And they either pay for it or they don't. So that's really going to drive things. So yeah. and I just you know, honestly get into the culture of um, and start sharing your stuff before you even have your deck. Share your journey of making your deck with your audience. Tell people it's coming. If someone expresses interest, hey, would you like to try it? Like we're, we're on the cusp of as soon as you create a deck, we're going to give you five tokens mm -hmm. for that deck. Like just as a, you make a deck, you get five tokens, you can then give them to five friends, customers, whoever. And you get so testimonials with that, get the testimonial. Right. Exactly. Right. So that's a new thing that we're doing. All recognize that people don't understand what this is. When you describe Spotify to someone or iTunes to someone back in 2000 and whatever it was, whenever it came out, there was a lot of blank expressions, right? Blank faces. That's, you just need to recognize that's where you are. So you need to explain to people what a deck is, how to use it. And then in addition to that, how to, what are the benefits of using it on your phone? It's never left at home. It's always in your pocket. You can use it at any time. You can pick up a spare moment and you know learn something. The more decks you, you try and use and explore, you're putting yourself in a position of, of knowledge and experience to speak fr from authority on what, you know, what you're creating and why. Uh, so if we follow your daily, you know, what you said, the daily habit, but using the deck deckable daily, how long might it take for us to become proficient and comfortable? Two days. <laughs> I think it's just a few days. Yeah. Well, but, but it's yeah, supposed yeah. to be a daily flow, so it has to be more well, than, is, than yeah. two days. Well, just... There's two answers to that. To Rose's point, a couple of days. But to instantiating a habit that's life-changing. Yeah. yeah. 21. Yeah. You know, Oh, the well, usual 21, yeah. You read the 5 a.m. club, it's 66 days, 21 days to unprogram, 21 to like uh, install, and 21 to anchor in, right? But yeah, that's the same. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, it's, yes, it's available on iPad, and it yes. looks fantastic. It's, uh, it's fantastic it looks, on the huge it's iPad. <laughs> we're, very, we're very excited because we want to build all the facilitation features that because we because we see the potential for enterprise is so big, right? So. This is one other okay. cool thing. I didn't. I just realized this, but you can go back in your t in your time, and you know, open the date and still play with the cards in that day. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. it's super cool. Like you can go back and you know, if you loved something, you can go back and look at it. So it's really well thought out, Mr. Nick. Amazing. We've also customized in the last version that you can choose the word used to journaling. Is it, I'm, I, I, I'm being funny here, but it's a woo woo word. It Whereas in the right. enterprise, someone wants to take notes. You can, with your deck. I love, say, I love the notes. I think the notes is great. Yeah. yeah so it's just, so you can call it, you can call it notes for your deck, right? That's, so you're going to be allowed and to. You don't, have to, you don't have to call it meditating. You can call it reflection, whatever. You know, I love that. That's so good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So good. All right. Are, are you guys all excited? I know Pamela. Pamela is not sleeping tonight. She's going to be flying tomorrow. And definitely follow us. Follow us on socials. I mean, likes are great, but just comment. Just write in two words. It, it, Comment is is a, is a hundred times more valuable than a like. Also, just you need to you need to have a social following to sell your deck. 
So don't wait till your deck is finished. Start following people now and have some engaging content that may, that may make them follow you back, right? So there's a lot of, uh, there's a kind of runway on all that stuff. You have to start to to get to that point. Excellent. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you. I think Great. we're all good. good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so awesome. much. Thanks, Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. This has been wonderful. Everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Hey.